My client's name is uh, Alex Buka. Um, everybody is calling him belt name, but he's a he's a human being and he has name and that's Alex Buka. Um, what happened, as we know, is that the thing has gone viral. I think they made episodes or series of uh, Kai Kai Belt challenge. Uh, my client's story is that uh, it's a consented to thing. Um, that uh, you talk to the girls. In fact, he doesn't even know each of their names too. Uh, they met through TikTok. Uh, the, and then they, the first girl has not come forward. But the other two, the other, I think, is from Tari. The third one is from Sipik. I think those are the two that have uh, laid complaint. And then that resulted in his brutal attack, as we know. And this brutal attack uh, started on Wednesday, commenced at 6 a.m. to 10. That's four hours of brutal kicking. And then he was stripped naked, put in the cell. I think the, he was apprehended by the relatives of the third woman. So uh, they did their thing, you know. The, that comes is this third relatives of the third woman doing that. Uh, he doesn't know the name, so I don't know her name too. So once the judge and statements are given to me, he'll know the name, I'll know the name of those girls as well. Um, so uh, he was man and low child, and then he was dragged into the cell, he was stripped naked, and then the second group came, the relatives of the other woman, and the, sadly, the policemen opened the cell doors for the civilians to come and then assault him inside the cell. And then he was naked and he was told, you know, don't touch your private part, we want to snap you and all these things. And when he wanted to pro cover his, because he was already naked, so when he wanted to cover his private parts, he was kicked on his private parts, told him to stay. And then they invited the public to the policemen, uh, according to my client's instructions, is that they got like kind of gate feet, was as if he was uh, an animal kept in a Jew sort of thing. So they asked him to ask the public to come pay us and come get shots if you want to. So he just went through hell. His dignity was lost. Uh, uh, that happened at Badali. No, that happened at Badali, and then he was from there, he was transferred to here. He was stripped naked. Fortunately for one of the prisoners, I think he's not even friend to felt sorry for him that he had to take out his shot for him to stay with sportswear and gave him a shot which now he's wearing uh, and he's in cell. So what happened was then uh, I think on the day brought him here and around he was badly beaten, you know, he was bleeding all over the place. So around in the night on Thursday um, they released him. For some reason they released, the police released him. And then he was picked up on Friday for the purpose of uh, police, what we call IAU, Internal Investigation Unit, uh, police officers who police the actual police themselves so that the police officers don't step out of line. So he was supposed that they were carrying out the investigations, uh, as uh, Minister Krama uh, indicated through social media, that yes, that should happen. However, I think that didn't complete because he was supposed to go to Badili. You know, every common Papua New Guineans do not know the names of every police officers. So uh, all one can do is, that's the man, you see. So that opportunity was supposed to have been given to him yesterday if the IAU was serious in completing the investigation as to the participation of uh, the officers in inflicting such uh, undigni uh, you know pain and assault and torture to this uh, client of mine. That didn't happen. And then uh, in the course of investigation, I think the officer, one of those officers brought him here and uh, told him that he has something to answer. So that's when he called me again. First we were at Gordon's and then we came here. And then I was surprised to see that uh, they wanted to do what we call ROI, uh, record of interview, to, for the charges to be laid on him. That went on until 6 p.m. and the police were tired. I was too, the client agreed, so they detained him and then we suspended the record of interview. Uh, I think it's going to continue for the... So, and now he's in cell now. I tried to obtain police bail, bail but at a time. The, I think the police have changed. Usually, you know, 
the police used to give bail uh, their, their, you know, station commanders or uh, their officers who can grant bail. But I think I, for some reason, because the police bail uh, was abused, I think they restricted it where the higher ranking officers should um, approve such police bail. So on uh, Friday, I tried to do police bail for him, but unfortunately, the authorized officer who sanctions grant of bail was not available. So he's detained on Friday, he spent yesterday night, now he's there. So tomorrow he's likely to spend in, uh, yeah, spend the night as well in jail. And on Monday I'm going to do his uh, bail application so that uh, he comes out. And uh, now he's in jail. That's what's happening. Now the story, I'm yet to, as now, I'm yet to get the charges. But as I spoke to him, uh, they said that uh, he told me that uh, there are nine counts, I think, uh, those charges that he mentioned. I haven't cited the charge sheet as yet, because uh, I think they're saying kidnapped. Uh, he kidnapped the girls, he raped them, uh, made pornography with them, uh, sexual touching, anal penetration. I'm not really, that's what he told me, but as a lawyer, I need to see the charges myself for what they mean. Uh, I might. Uh, say some things that are not there, but that's uh, coming from the guy's own mouth. So now he's been charged, I think nine counts. So uh, now that is, uh, that is the actual, that's kind of stopping the inv investigation uh, into the police officers who have actually assaulted. So the, what the girls are saying is that he was driving a bus and um, there was this big man who was with him so they were innocently standing by on the bus stops and then um, he came and then he snatched them, put them in the vehicle and they, uh, he forced them to make the videos and uh, he forced them to have sex with him and you know all those sorts of... So my client's story is straightforward. He met them through TikTok. Uh, that was a consensual thing because in a TikTok group it is a kind of challenge that they did it. How weird it may seem, it's something important point to note is that they agreed to do it. And one can see from the video, are these girls in distress when they say this thing, you know, I want to eat belt. You know, the room obviously is only two parties there. <laughs> Leg of a guy and a woman who's trying to chew the belt or whatever. Now, okay, now they're saying that, oh, he was forcing them and then he had, the, and then he had sex with them and uh, filmed them having sex. and. So forth. So my my client's story, uh, which I believe I think is innocent, is soon gonna come out, and all these things will be over for him, and we'll go after the police officers and so forth. My client is saying that they we agreed. He doesn't even know the name. They agreed to meet. They agreed to do the challenge, and then it resulted in them having sex. Uh, that he admitted. But this was a consensual thing. Uh, for the first uh, girl, uh, I think. Sharon, that I think one of these women is from Central. She didn't come forward. Uh, Sharon, the Tariq, I think her name is Sharon. Uh, Sharon came forward. That is CPIC lady. As for Sharon, uh, he said that they agreed on that TikTok that she would come with a uniform to, you know, fool her parents that she's going to go to school. And then, you know, and then the agreement was she's going to have uh, civilly, you know, clothes. So once he was in the bus, he took off her clothes. He picked him up at uh, Waigani. And then because they were meeting for the first time, you know, they had to discuss, you know, there's fire service station there, there's a market out there. He gave details of it so you can see that he's telling the truth. So they were there discussing as to what they should do. And then they went to, there's a guest house at Flyover. He gave every description of it. When there, and then he said, I paid for it, he paid for the cafe, and then they went and then did the challenge thing and then ended up having sex. So it's a consensual thing. I didn't kidnap. And then he said, there's the allegation that he kidnapped them because the women are saying that he was driving a bus. My client, Alex, does not know how to drive, has never driven a vehicle, doesn't have a license to. And they are saying he, is, he was driving a bus. If you can drive a small car, let alone a bus, you know, so... This is uh, this is this is something that really kind of wild accusations is a way of the mark. But anyway, that's the story. 
But the, that's what happened. And this was a consensual thing. After that happened, they ended up having sex. And then he said, I think uh, in that place, I think they 50 can a um, three-hour sort of... Uh, um, pay 50 kina or something. That's what he said. And that's for the specific lady. Uh, she was the one who actually paid for the cat fee. He said, uh, she told him, he said, because he, Alex didn't have money, she said, okay, I'll pay, you, get a credit uh, dinner money and come pick me. I'm, I'll be waiting at Manu service station. So he went to pick her up there. And then she unfortunately didn't have the laptop to uh, so laptop code I mean the power code so they had to go to the girl's house which he identified to pick the laptop code and then they said they went to uh, there's a guest house at um, I think at the back of uh, Rainbow uh, stop and shop there's is at a uh, Navila Navila guest house and then they hired uh, um, a room for 50 kina per hour 50 kina per hour and um, they uh, they, you know, did uh, whatever thing. And then after that, he left. She went. So what happened is that after the challenge, the girls them actually wanted to see how well they have done. So he shared. They shared the challenge thing. Now, the funny thing is he didn't share or post it on Facebook. But it was uh, posted on TikTok because that's the whole reason why they came together to do it. But I think social of what we call inter social sharing thing where from instagram you can share to the other social networks and platform me so that is what happened and it got into facebook everybody saw it and then the whole saga began so in my view the guy is totally innocent the kind of treatment he received the pub negative publicity he got like everybody does it uh, no rape i think uh, i don't think there is evidence for all the charges that have laid against him but well that's that's the work that police does so it's a constitutional duty to do what they are doing so we respect them um, we won't say you know they are wrong or whatever our opinions may be it doesn't matter they have the constitutional right to decide on their own and charge whom they want to charge um, yeah so that is the thing so I feel uh, for my client I kind of because I'm not I have actually given him all day yesterday. I'm here for him today. I think it's going to cost me a lot personally on time because I'm a you know, principal lawyer of my own. My time is money. But because after seeing the video, you know, somebody needs to help this guy. You know, we just can't um, get a Papua New Guinea and get beat up like this. Because if we don't start acting that life matters, then who's going to do it? You know, you think think that's on my style up, think think doesn't do anything. We got to start helping people now. Huh? So that is the whole reason why I decided to step, step up just to help him, to show him that, you know, we are here to, instead of just staying at home and saying good things on Facebook, you know, I actually decided to step up and help him. So I think he's happy to, you know, have his lawyer because, you know, knowing that you're not paying for his, but he's there for you every now and then to ensure that your rights are so protected. So our our plan now is to go through um, the charges. Well, they have laid charges against him, so we got to deal with But at the same time, uh, we are going to write a letter to the in internal investigation unit uh, following up on what is the progress on the... Because the manner in which, as I have outlined, uh, stripping someone naked, marching them into their cells, allowing civilians and police to together assault in their cells, this is come on this is this is this is this is not this is very bad we can't just allow that to happen like that and go away we have laws for that you know every everyone you know once somebody has committed a wrong let the courts give the penalty it's not penalty is not to be you know police are not authorized to give penalty they're not authorized to use force to, unless one is trying to the law prescribe reasonable force but that's to ensure uh, ensure to prevent a uh, crime from being committed or to ensure somebody doesn't escape justice yeah. well, but it's, it must be reasonable force but in where somebody is surrendering pleading for his life crying and trying to cover their faces and you're using iron bar boots come on this you know and then for four hours you know I don't know actually I think my client deserves medical treatment that's what I told him yesterday 
because we don't know. He was booted how many repeatedly, how many times. So, uh, yesterday during the interview, I told Razor's point with the police, and they called in St. George ambulance to come check him. And then they said it looks like he had sustained uh, internal because he has kicked repeatedly. So, so after this, I think after I bail him out, um, we are going to seek medical attention so that he. Um, all a docu doctor has to document everything. Eh? So we have, uh, that's pretty much uh, where we are at right now. So the sorry, just to add on to that, as for the police hire you, the police will have to be if the officers identify should be disciplined administratively and must be criminally charged if need be. And uh, we are also going to sue them. Uh, and the state for um, for negligence. Uh, it's a, a body of law, a subject of law where an officer of the state uh, fails to perform his duty and steps outside of the line or beyond excessive forces used and it comes under that subject of law. So we are actually going to sue the police as well for that. So it's kind of just a beginning of a whole um, uh, series of litigations that is likely to go up and hopefully uh, I think the police do the right thing by I mean the internal IAU uh, internal investigations directory of the police need to really do their work um, I hope they do I'm not uh, sure at what stage of the internal uh, investigations they are at so hopefully they should do something so that such things are not repeated again that is the concern, you know, because we are every day we are hear, hearing of police brutality, and you know, it's sadly people are more afraid of police than uh, criminals, and that shouldn't be the case, you know. You know, when you see police, you are supposed to feel safe. You are supposed to feel that you know you have a protector there. But unfortunately, in Papua New Guinea, everybody cowers at the presence of police. So this is something that is not good, and uh, well. We need to start somewhere, and I think that's my little contribution to ensure that such is not repeated, yes.